So Michigan, what do the early polls suggest? Well, early, it, uh, they're not so early. Um, the Michigan primary is pretty soon. So. Sanders leads Clinton 58 to 39 with 18 to 39 year olds. Okay, that's a good start. Um, that's uh, if if he can hold that margin, then you know he he can win some delegates and he can start catching up. That's about about what what he's got to win um, these sorts of states by is about 60 to 40. All right. But Clinton leads Sanders 52 to 48 percent with 40 to 49 year olds. 62 to 33 percent with 50 to 59 year olds. 65 to 29 percent with 60 to 69 year olds and 82 to 16 with voters that are 70 or older. You can see there's a clear trend there that as the voter gets older, they support Clinton more and more and more. Now I got to point out that this may be a little too clear. Um, but I, I, I don't like IVR polls. Um, I think um, we've learned um, over the last little while that IVR polls can be wildly inconsistent. Um, sometimes they're right on, but sometimes they're not even close. Um, the only way to really get a good polling is to have live interviewers, and um, the primary in Michigan is probably not important enough for anybody to put that in the ground. So. We'll find out how close the polls are, but um, IVR polls can be completely wrong. Um, they're, they're one of the few. It, it, it's it, the internet polling is, is pretty consistently bad. The IVR polling is just all over the place. Sometimes it's spot on. Sometimes it's like not even close, right? So it's just you know flip a coin kind of thing. But regardless, I mean, like, <laughs> e e even if you cut it down, you know, 10%, those are still numbers that are very hard to spin once you get the over, you know, 50%. I'm sorry, once you get the over, older than 50 demographic, it's, he's still getting walloped even if you take it down 10%. How about race? Now, I don't, I, I don't like race polling, but, um... Clinton is definitely ahead with white voters. With white voters, she's ahead 61 to 35. Um, she is supposedly ahead with black voters 84 to 13. Um, I'm probably dealing with relatively small sample sizes in limited geographic areas. But regardless, um, Michigan is the state where Bernie needs to break that trend and close that gap, okay? Black voters in Michigan ought to be a lot more liberal, and if he can't close that gap, at least to the point where it's statistically immeasurable, then he has to deal with the reality that there's a racial component to the race. What I mean when I say that is that if Clinton wins 61 to 35 with white voters, then whatever she wins white voters by, whatever she wins black voters by needs to be closer, right? So if she wins white voters 61 to 35, and she wins black voters, you know, 65 to 35, then, you know, it's not as glaring, right? So whatever she wins white voters by, the, the difference between what she wins white and black by really needs to be, you know, in the 5 to 10 degree margin, not these consistent 20 plus differences. Um, even even counting the fact that you know there's a lot less black people in Michigan, um, they're not going to be as you know overly religious. But I mean the thing is that those numbers, so they, they, those those statistics should help Sanders. So why aren't they, right? And if they're not, then like you know the, like, you got to face the facts here. And I'm sorry, but it's hard to understand without bringing in the anti-Semitism or simply questioning the fairness of the polling. It, it simply doesn't make sense. It simply doesn't, okay? Now, let's be clear, though. African-American voters will not turn the results in Michigan. There's just not enough black people in Michigan. The pivotal part is going to be swinging older people. But whatever the black numbers are, they just need to get closer to the white numbers in terms of percentages. 
It's just a proof of concept. Okay, he has to demonstrate that blacks aren't voting as a block somehow. That issues and individual preferences are more important than racial identity politics or whatever it is that people are throwing around. Because if he can't do that, then you need to look at those numbers and try to figure out what the hell's going on. Um, again, it doesn't make sense. You know, urban, black... See, I think that's, a, that's another difference. Um, I'm not sure about this. Again, I might be demonstrating my ignorance of American demographics, but I think that um, in Michigan um, is going to be a place where there's going to be more urban blacks, right? So black people are going to be... Um, uh, I, I'm trying to watch my language here. I don't want to say that black people are going to be segregated into the cities. That's the kind of thing that... Uh, when I was at the bar last night, um, we were talking about um, uh, marijuana rights, um, you know, and the fact that... Or mar marijuana laws, and the fact that the reason why Colorado can have a law like that is because the legal system is designed in such a way that the states um, have um, more of a say and I uttered the phrase states' rights, um, I caught myself immediately. But at the same time, it's like, I gotta be real careful about certain language, right? Um, I'm a Canadian, I, I mean no harm, it's just, <laughs> you know, I, and, and I know when I catch myself, it's just like, 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 phrases like that aren't loaded like that up here, right? So when we talk about the idea of a state having more rights, and we say states' rights casually, um, we, we really just mean it like that. We don't mean, you know, in the context of the Civil War and Confederacy and all these sorts of things, right? We just mean to say that the American legal framework, the state's rights overpower the federal rights. That's the way the system is designed. And, and because of that, Colorado can pass a law legalizing marijuana without breaking the federal... Um, uh, systems uh, set up, which um, uh, why is it so cold in here? I'm trying to heat up. Um, without with, uh, breaking the, the, the federal systems, um, uh, you know, international um, legal obligations. What I'm trying to say is that I think that um, black people are distributed mostly in cities in, in, in Detroit. I might be wrong. Um, but, but my understanding is that it's more of an urban thing and that the rural areas are going to be predominantly white. So, if that's the case, then you should see, um, you know, urban politics assert itself. But like I say, what we saw in Massachusetts um, seems to break the um, logic there. It should be that people in the city should be, you know... Uh, they should be more open to a uh, uh, to, 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 to redistributive um, concepts. Um, you know, however weak it is that uh, you know Sanders' concept of redistribution really is, um, they should be more liberal. And, and uh, you know, in this kind of colloquial sense of the term liberal, um, and 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 they should be more um, uh, likely to take into what he's saying. So. Given that truth, um, Sanders should do way better with blacks in Michigan than in the southern areas where there's a lot of, you know, a lot of rural blacks, um, blacks on a lot of farms, and it's you get the same kind of left-right urban-rural split. Um, this can't be completely gone in the United States because you see it in the Republican results. And, you know, if, if this continues to not make any sense, then... Um, like I said, you need to try to find um, extraneous circumstances like anti-Semitism, or you need to question whether um, the polling is fair. And and, and I think that um, it's um, become strange enough, often enough, that those questions are becoming relevant um, beyond you know conspiratorial logic and just simply these results don't make sense. Um, if it was Russia and you had results that don't make sense, you would say, you know, are these fair? Um, but it seems to be um, outside of the discourse in the United States. Um, it should be. It should be in, in the discourse. Um, 
uh, there, there should be more skepticism about um, uh, the fairness of these results. And uh, like I say, the, the, the Republican results are following proper urban-rural split trends the way you would expect them to. It, it's why is it not? Like, th th there's something very strange happening in this Democratic primary. It's really hard to understand. Um, and it just simply does not make any sense in class analysis. Um, but like I say, we'll see what the numbers look like in Michigan when they come up. Huh?